been a two-time captain for us, and, and, and probably you know at the quarterback position, you know you need a guy that's you know going to lead your football team. Uh, not only did he lead our offense, he led our football team. I mean, he was he was the, the guy. I think he's the most ready to play. Um, he's tough. He's smart. He's accurate. Um, he plays with a little funk, a little spunk, a little fire. He is the best quarterback. There's no question about it. A very good runner. Don't sleep on those legs. Oh, he faked the slide. Sauce time. Pick it. Did that work? Touchdown, Pitt. Got away from one man. Into the back of the end zone. Wide open touchdown. Jordan Addison. They'll give him a chance to throw it. And coming back to make the catch is Addison. And he's off to the races. Jordan Addison. Touchdown, Panthers. That may have just run that. To fully understand the story about quarterback Kenny Pickett, you have to know the beginning. Kenny Pickett has roots that are firmly planted in the sand of the Jersey Shore. He grew up just outside of Asbury Park in Oakhurst, New Jersey. Kenny is a New Jersey guy through and through, f for sure. And kind of how he reflects that um, is how he approaches everything. We don't care about the outside factors. We're focused on what we need to do and, and what, you know, doing the jo our job to the best of our ability. There is such a, an absolute focus with him on the task at hand. And that bodes well for especially the quarterback position, but, but in everything he does, he approaches it with such professionalism um, and, and attacks everything. So, you know, anytime a coach can get a player that has those features and those qualities, makes your job easy, right? Like it's, it's like showing them the path and letting them go. Between the restaurants, beaches, and boardwalks, there is always something to do on the weekend in Pickett's hometown. Ocean Township is even home to the famous music venue, The Stone Pony, which was made famous by another New Jersey native, Bruce Springsteen. But on a Friday night from 2014 to 2016, the biggest show in town was watching Pickett take center stage for the Spartans football team. Just to let it rip and go out and have fun, you know, be the leader of the team, lead the offense. And uh, I just think we had an overall great night offensively and defensively. Like most active kids growing up, Kenny was a multi-sport athlete and had an interest in baseball and basketball. He even had the talent to play on defense for football if he really wanted to. But during high school, Pickett made the commitment to solely focus on football, where during his sophomore season, he earned reps as a quarterback on the varsity team. And as a junior, Kenny earned all conference honors with almost 1,800 passing yards, over 300 rushing yards, and 24 total touchdowns. He also carried Ocean Township to a 9-2 record in the 2015 playoffs. That type of production didn't go unnoticed, and it caught the attention of former Temple University head coach Matt Rule, who is now the head coach of the Carolina Panthers. The type of buzz that was surrounding Pickett also caught the attention of another Jersey Shore resident who's familiar with the quarterback position himself. But we'll get to that later. Kenny actually committed to play at Temple before his final high school season, but he never made it to Philadelphia. After the performance he had his senior year, offers from larger schools came in, with one of them being from the University of Pittsburgh. When a tough decision had to be made, Kenny ultimately went with Coach Narduzzi and the Pitt Panthers. I'm joined by quarterback Kenny Pickett. Kenny, 
you reconfirmed your commitment to Pittsburgh not too long ago. How has it been since you arrived on campus? Uh, it's been great. You know, it's it's really family atmosphere. You know, they saw that on your recruiting visits, and a lot of schools saw that. So when you get here, you want to find out if it's really genuine or not. And you know, it's definitely genuine when you get here. It's not just in the facility, but it's on campus. You know, talking to the students, talking to the professors. You know, it's just great people. Just like he was in his freshman year of high school, Kenny Pickett was once again the new guy in the locker room. No one knew anything about the young quarterback from New Jersey, but like it happens across all sports, injuries can open up doors for opportunity. And during Kenny's freshman year, his chance came knocking. Moving. Danucci, sack, Ryan Guthrie. The junior linebacker. Pickett, middle of the field, Arujo Lopes is tackled, ball game is over, and Dino Babers and the Orange get their third win of the year, their first in conference play. After getting just one snap in the game against Syracuse, Kenny started to see more action on the field in the coming weeks. First it was against NC State. Pickett back out there, it'll be his second series. Danucci hanging out of the sideline, that ball complete. Then against Virginia Tech, after starting quarterback Ben Danucci was benched early in the game. Rafael Arujo Lopes, he has the first down as he crosses the midfield stripe and goes down to the 49-yard line, tackled by Luke Reynolds of Virginia Tech. Even though the team lost in the final seconds against the Hokies, head coach Pat Narduzzi saw something in the young quarterback. Because of Kenny's performance, coach Narduzzi named pick at the starting quarterback for the final game of the season. It wouldn't be easy as the matchup was against the number two ranked team in the nation, the Miami Hurricanes. And on the slam throws it behind Wea, but he reaches back and makes the catch for a first down. He's going to try to run for it. The freshman is at the goal line. He's in. That's a pit touchdown. Pickett, the true freshman, heading to the end zone, at the Paula, touchdown! Following the upset of Miami in 2017, Pickett worked hard in the offseason and won the starting quarterback job as a sophomore. In just his second season, Kenny was now the leader of the Panthers football team. Circling back to high school, the other South Jersey native that was intrigued by Kenny would now become Kenny's personal quarterback coach. His name is Tony Rossiopi, and his relationship to the Pickett family goes way beyond the football field. You know, so it's kind of cool. Like, I, you know, when I started um, in Ocean Township, uh, we, uh, maybe second grade, we bought a house in Ocean, and it actually was next door to Kenny's grandfather, Bevan, and his mom, Casey. So I was next door neighbors from, oh God, uh, first grade maybe to, I was a sophomore in high school when we moved out of Ocean Township. So, you know, so all those years I lived right next door to, you know, both of them. Kenny, when he was probably third or fourth grade, I don't know if he remembers this, but I, I worked at a gym and him and his sister and uh, two more of his friends would come in and we would do like fitness stuff. You know, um, just like core stuff and balance stuff. And it was uh, a buddy of mine owned the gym that was good friends with them. And uh, so that's, you know, that's when I really had him then at the first time. We didn't do anything football related, but, and then really heard about him a ton just through like middle school, going to high school. Just um, Donnie Klein is the head coach of Ocean Township, is one of my best friends growing up. So he would tell me about him, you know, when he was in eighth grade and his freshman year and his sophomore year. And uh, at that time, I was coaching three sports at Franklin High School. So I, I really wasn't doing much training on the side. You know, I was teaching phys ed, I was coaching three sports. And uh, then I, first, next time I saw him was, uh, we played him at Monmouth University in a seven on seven tournament. Um, going into a senior, he looked great. You know, he, he, was, he was big, he was tall, he was big. You can tell he hit the weight room a lot. He was throwing the ball really well. We played them in the, uh, in the finals of the tournament. And um, it was great, just he looked awesome. You know, so we just kind of connected again and stayed in touch. And then, uh, you know, through his freshman year at Pittsburgh, we stayed in touch and then really started training, training, um, you know, uh, the winner of his freshman year at Pittsburgh. The relationship between Kenny and Tony continued to grow in the following years. 
With the help of Tony's coaching and Kenny's experience, the quarterback from New Jersey went on to put up solid numbers as a starter from 2018 to 2020. Kenny threw for almost 7,500 yards, ran for almost 500 yards, and had a combined 51 total touchdowns. I've been with him for six years now, so working with Tony is really just polishing up all the details that we have, you know, over the years we've, that we've put all the work we've put in. So cleaning all the little things up and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's going really well. And I think that the hardest thing for, for a lot of college quarterbacks is that people understand how good they are. You know, um, sometimes they're on, you know, teams that aren't very good. Sometimes they're in systems that aren't great that can really could showcase their ability. So like, it's really hard to be a really good quarterback. You know, there's a lot going into this position and it's so subjective. You just want to let people go, listen, hey, fan base, this kid that you have is really good and you're lucky to have him. You know, so I try to kind of accomplish that all through the stuff I do. It was also at this time he started going to Test Football Academy for his offseason workouts. Kenny would work with Garrett Gudmundson, Coach Tony, and the founder of TFA, Kevin Dunn. He was always working with, uh, with Tony <clears throat> over the years, and we've always seen him in the building. And um, it, was, uh, it was easy to see his work ethic and how... Uh, how every time he would be home, whether it was a break or a weekend or any time he was in the area, those guys would get together uh, and throw. It was great to see that kind of dedication to mastering his craft, and you, you kind of knew, you knew the difference. You know, you could see it. Um, I've been doing this a long time, and just to be able to see the difference between, you know, what he was doing and how calculated he was, and you can see the guys that get upset when, you know, they're not attaining perfection. Like every throw he was shooting for a 10, you know. Um, and I think that's, you know, that's the mindset of a champion. And it was really easy to see at that point. We want to be able to um, just be a safe place where he can come in and get his work, you know, with professionals who are world class uh, in their field. So he feels at home. That was the that was the main the main thing. And, and mine and Kenny's relationship is um, has grown, has blossomed over uh, his time here. Because I think, again, going back to that respect, I think we have a level of respect for each other. Uh, mine with my craft, and him with how hard he works and how he respects everything that goes into his position. Not just from a, a quarterback standpoint, but from strength and conditioning and speed. Yeah, I think the first thing I'll mention is the coaching. Um, you know, I love every guy here that, that coaches us, and we all have great relationships with them. I think that's the number one, that's the key. Uh, and that's how you get great, you know, results is on the personal level first, and you go put the work in. But uh, we all really get along so well, and it's kind of like a, a team atmosphere, I'd say, with all the other guys that I've come in with. So um, it's a family atmosphere, and everyone just pushes themselves to be better. After 2020, Kenny was presented with another tough decision regarding his football career. He could either declare for the NFL draft in 2021 or decide to come back for one more year of eligibility at Pittsburgh. If he stayed, Pickett would be betting on himself with the hopes to win a championship and improve his draft stock for the 2022 offseason. It would not be an easy choice and one that would involve many difficult conversations with Kenny's family and his coaches. That, that decision weighed heavily on him. And, uh, you know, he, he definitely did his homework and he was getting into, um, you know, trying to understand where his draft status was and understanding, uh, you know, physically where he was at and, you know, taking a look at the times in terms of there were a lot of guys that were staying in, you know, and taking that extra year of eligibility. So the following year, likely uh, there were going to be double the amount of players that were coming out. You know, the best thing I could do for him and being a mentor in his life that I try to be is, is just give him all the information possible for him and his family to make the decision. And I think that um, a lot of guys that do what I do, you know, have their own personal agendas. And um, I was never that way with him or anybody. And I think he respected that out of me. You know, I think that um, it could have been real easy for me to go, listen, listen, just leave school, come train with me. And that way I can make a lot of money and, and you know, and we could do some things and my, you know, my name gets bigger out in the industry, which I could care less about. And I think that, um, I think all I tried to do is just give him kind of what I was getting back from people, whether it was pros and cons and uh, kind of just let them make a decision. And uh, I've always said, like, if he called me and said, 
I'm out. Let, let's go. Let's let's go. Let's go get this thing. Let's let's. I'm gonna enter draft and okay, great. You know, or vice versa. I got the phone call. I got them. I'm gonna go back. Okay, great. You want to throw tomorrow? You know, like and that's kind of our relationship. You know, and and um, it's whatever's best for him and his family. That's what we're gonna do, and I'll be there either way, and we're gonna work. Number eight went all in and returned to campus for one more season. His choice was not without risk, but the payoff was too enticing to pass up on. With regards to Pickett's 2021 season, I'll let you be the judge on how his decision played out. on himself and you know there was there wasn't a moment once he made that decision there wasn't a moment that he didn't you know look back and regret that all he did was wanted to put his head down and work Pickett keeps it and he's got the end zone on the world stage where he's coming out this is his draft class under the microscope he he showed that he's got such a, a, a resilience and uh, ability to to kind of rise above anything and I think him betting on himself showed the world that and I think there's so much there's so much respect behind that because it's all or nothing you you are you are the product and he and he really kind of turned the screws down and 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 locked in and I've never you know seen an athlete do it like he did so consistently throughout his time. This is opening big for Hammond motions out of the backfield wide open. Room service, ring it up. Touchdown Panthers. Kenny's historic season was capped off by winning the ACC championship and finishing as a finalist for the Heisman Trophy. This was absolutely everything that I had, you know, envisioned and um, you know, just to, to say, like I said, to say you're going to do something about it and do it, it's, just, it's a really special thing. Not to mention he also got awards like the Johnny Unitas Golden Arm Award and the ACC Offensive and Overall Player of the Year. Coach Narduzzi and the entire Panthers coaching staff, along with his coaches at Test Football Academy, all played a role in Kenny's on-field success in 2021. I think we did it the right way. You know, like I look back and I think that um, between the time we put in, between the fact that, um, you know, myself and the Pitt, University of Pitt coaching staff have a great relationship and, and Mark Whipple, his, his office coordinator, was, was an amazing coach. Um, great skiing guy, great, understands the quarterback really well. And then obviously Coach, Nar coach Narduzzi was the head coach there. You know, like the, f the fact that we all kind of work together in this is, is I think the model on how you know, college quarterback should be coached year round, you know, between what he does there and then what he does with a guy like me. Yeah, I mean, the role that Tess played was kind of just setting the foundation. I went back in the best shape that I, you know, have ever been in, really. So having that kind of groundwork laid and, and that was done, um, going in to, to start the training at Pitt, I was just so far ahead of where I've ever been having that month here. And then obviously with Tony in the summers and just honing in on my craft, and I just improved tremendously going into my final season. Kenny finished his career at Pittsburgh as the all-time leader in passing yards, completions, total offense, and passing touchdowns with 81, officially breaking the record previously held by Dan Marino. He also had the most 300 and 400 yard passing games in Pitt history. Even though his season ended, Kenny kept working and was the first member of Test Football Academy's 2022 Combine class. He was literally this year the first guy that showed up and he's still training at this point. So he's the first guy that was here, and he's the last guy to leave. And I think he's <clears throat> he's the kind of player that will hyper focus on you know what his weaknesses are to now turn them into his strengths. Not just to eliminate them as questionable thoughts, but take a weakness and actually turn it into a strength. He was preparing for events like the Senior Bowl, the NFL Combine, and especially his pro day. Yeah, so that's a hard throw. Yeah, the, the, it's kind of that crossbar throw. You the layer that thing. It's just got to layer up beautifully. It's a touch throw. Yeah. Look, he he's, he excels when you, when you heat him up because I mean, he, according to PFF, he's got through 25 touchdowns against the blitz. 
On top of his showcase events, Kenny was looking to get faster, stronger, and prepare his body for the grind of an NFL offseason. Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's all those things. Right? We, we have numbers set for ourselves, and we're still chasing those numbers. We have, you know, you know weeks to work towards that. Um, but I just think, you know, be, becoming the best version of myself that I can be as a quarterback, as an athlete, and I'm, I'm well on my way towards that, changing my body and being the best quarterback I can be with Coach, you know, Coach Rassiope. So all those things are, are going as planned, and, you know, I'm excited to continue to work. Now that his college career has come to an end, Kenny looks to finally fulfill a childhood dream of playing in the NFL. So I think first and foremost is that call on you know April 28th. That, that's the that's the number. That's what I've been dreaming of my whole entire life, and um, something I've talked to about with my family forever. So I'm I'm excited to, to hear that phone ring that night, and um, all the work will pay off by then. As far as his coaches attest, for the past six years they have watched him grow and are excited to see the man he becomes not only on but off the field. See him grow into the man that he's become. And to feel like I'm talking to a 35-year-old, and he's literally 23, it, it is, uh, there are just some people in this world that are more old souls, and he's definitely one of them. Um, and I think that kind of maturity and stability will bring a locker room together, and he will be ready to lead on day one. It's, um, I mean, it's amazing. You know, like it's the fun thing about the draft stuff sometimes is that, you know, sometimes you get these guys for four weeks or six weeks or eight weeks and, you know, can you make them better? Absolutely. I mean, I, I do it every year with guys, you know, but the fact that I have had him for that long, um, A, it just goes to show you what your teaching is right, right? And the, your ability to, to teach it is correct. And you have that ability. Um, but at the same time, it's, it's, it's almost like, um, you know, because it's been so long, you care about it so much. You know, it, it, it was a stressful process for me this year, you know, because I wanted the best for him, you know, and I felt almost the weight of making sure he had everything he needed. And I didn't want to let him down, you know, and I want to let his parents down. I didn't want to let Ocean Township down or Monmouth County down, or Jersey Shore. So, like, all those things went into my thought process every single day of making sure this kid is going to be the best player. And, um, I've always tried to approach it that way with my time, my energy, my effort, and um, it, it's been awesome. You know, it's been it's been um, it's pretty neat to sit down with somebody, you know, six years ago and say, "What's your goals? All right, let's let's do this. Let's work towards that." And it happened. The only question left to ask is if Kenny Pickett is ready for the NFL, and the answer should be very simple. Kenny Pickett is ready to be the first quarterback in the 2022 NFL Draft. And he will step in day one and be a big impact player if a team requires him to do that. Is Kenny Pickett ready? <laughs> better believe it. <laughs> I think he's, he's one of the most well-studied, hardest working, well-respected quarterbacks that are coming out in this year's draft. He's been waiting for this his whole life and, and again, you know, I didn't know him when he was a, a, a young man, but I've known him these past couple of years, and there is no doubt, he will leave no doubt, that he is absolutely 1,000% ready for the NFL. I'm so excited for him, his family, to be able to, for him to be able to show the world, because I know his family knows, but for him to be able to show the world what he can do, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about. I'm happy for him.
The play fake to Hall and Pickett finds a wide.